on this computer. Okay, let me open my Can you see me? No, your video is off. One second, let me check. Hold on a second. Uh, video is off. Let me... Now you can see me, right? Yes, yes. Okay, very good. The recording is on. Asmat Guru Bhyon Maha, Asmat Parama Guru Bhyon Maha, Asmat Sarva Guru Bhyon Maha, Shri Krishna Parabrahman El Maha, Shri Lakshmi Nusimha Parabrahman El Maha, Shri Lakshmi Hayavadan Lakshmi Hayavadana Parabrahman El Maha, Sarvam Shri Krishna Namaste. Uh, we are starting after a very, very long time. I understand that uh, some of you might not even uh, look at the Bhagavad Gita uh, channel anymore because we have left it for more than a couple of months. Uh, well, I'm back in India. Let's see if uh, uh, we get the blessings from up, from our Acharyas and Sriman Narayana so that we can continue these sessions um, periodically, uh, promptly, right? Okay. Uh, every week, hopefully. So let me show you where we started. I have a PowerPoint. Uh, PowerPoint slide show. Let me see if I can share. I have a new computer now, so I don't know if I can do things well. Oh, no issues. Okay. Share. Can you see my uh, slide deck? Uh, not yet. I think it is uh, uh, just starting. Yeah, now it is visible. It's visible. Suppose I put this on uh, this mode. Oh my God, no, 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 wait a minute. Uh, it's not yet on slideshow. Uh, yeah, yeah, it is. It's on screen now, right? Okay. So yes, yes, yes. So, uh, we will take up um, uh, like um, from 519 onwards, Shankara Vasha. We'll continue. Okay? We already discussed these couple of verses. I'm only going to discuss two extra verses today, just because, you know, I just wanted people to uh, get used uh, to the fact that we have started the class. Okay. You can ask any questions if you have. Um, some of them, um, I'm doing the, the, the older. Um, uh, you know, the verses we might have covered earlier. We'll also get continuity. Okay. Here. Ihai vatai jitasargo esham sam yesitam manaha nirdosham hisamam brahma tasmat brahmani pestita. Uh, this verse, uh, basically, uh, you know, just by the words, if you say, if you look at it, people right here while living. Taihi Jitas Sargaha, they have won over this, uh, this world of births, births and deaths. Esham Samye Sitamanaha, who have equanimity in their mind, that is, whose mind is calm. Nirdosham hi Samam Brahma. So, all that is, uh, that is, um, they, so they understand, they visualize, they realize Brahma which has no imperfections. There is no dosha, nirdosha. And it is sama. We will come to this because the word sama is used in a, in a, uh, in a way uh, and Shankaracharya takes sama in a slightly different way. Samam brahma, tasmati brahmani te sitaha. Hence, those people whose mind is calm and who have equanimity, they are engrossed in Brahma. Their minds are engrossed in Brahman. 
that's just simple meaning here and if you look at shankar bhashya iha eva jeevad bhireva jeevad bhireva taihi samadarshi bihi that means while living itself those people who see everything with equality panditaihi uh, who are knowledgeable jitaha that means they have won over vashikrataha they have controlled sargaha janma that is birth is controlled that means they don't have to uh, again be born they are beyond births and birth and death esham samye sarvabhuteshu so they look at everybody and in the past uh, couple of shloka shunichaiva swapakecha was there that means they treat a dog eater and uh, uh, dog and dog eater and um, uh, and and any other person in in a, in a similar way equally sarvabhuteshu brahmani samabhave sthitam nischali bhutam manaha antakaranam so their their object is brahma and that brahma is there in every being and their mind is without any distractions nischali bhutam it is constant it is focused on brahma and that is the manaha antakaranam is inner organ so their mind is focused on brahman nirdosham yadyapi doshavatsu swabakadishu moodaihi tad doshaihi doshavat iva vibhavyate see uh, thing is people think right that they are um, they are, suppose they are in touch with a person close relationship with a person who eats a do- who eats dogs swapaka swa is dog and he uh, he cooks and eats uh, dogs then this person says, oh i am not pure because i have this connection with this kind of people they may think like that those are so if anybody is in close connection they feel impure in a way right and and you know that this is not totally untrue because in in korea and all they do uh, beat up dogs and um, kill them and eat them and we uh, we know that right tathapi tad doshaihi asprishtam iti nirdosham dosha varjitam iti hi asmat so what this brahman is not touched by the um by any external impurities of whatever kind napi swaguna beda vibhinnam that means this brahman does not have attributes and the attributes are not different from it first of all there are no attributes to brahman nirgunatvat chaitanyasya atman consciousness is nirguna no attributes vakshati cha bhagavan ichhadinam khetra dharmatva so in the 13th chapter bhagavan krishna says even like dislike ichha dvesha hasukam dhuktam uh, happiness unhappiness all these things are not atman they are field khetra that is nature matter so the gunas belong to khetra not to atman so that is very clear for a samadarshi a person who sees everything equally he knows that all these likes and dislikes happiness sorrow all of them do not belong to atman at all these are not attributes of atman naapi anta visheshaha atmanah bhedakah santi this is an important thing we have covered already i'm just reminding you what we have covered napi antya visheshah atmanah bhedakah santi there are no uh, see antya visheshah I mean visheshah means, means attributes the the uh, vaisheshikas their set of philosophers they have come up with uh, some kind of separation or how to separate among atoms paramanu they say we can roughly say it is an atom right paramanu one paramanu and another paramanu how do you differentiate because both are invisible they come up with an idea that each one has a vishesha 
some specific um, attribute of attribute. And uh, uh, so the thing is, in Advaita, according to Shankaracharya, this, these Visheshas don't exist. You cannot, Jivatmas are not separate. Jivatma inside you, Jivatma inside me, Jivatma inside the dog or a snake or, or, or somebody in, in, in some other country. All this, there are no multiple Jivatmas. If there, uh, the, the, the uh, Jivatmas are separated into, into separate, uh, separate entities by igno ignorant people. So there is no Antya Vishesha. There is no specific attribute uh, which separates one jivat from, Jivatma from the other because there, there is no difference to start with. Atmanaha Beda Kaha Santi. Napi Antya Vishesha Atmanaha Beda Kaha Santi. There is nothing that can separate one Atman, which is only one. A pot or a jar or a cup is not really breaking one sky or space into separate, separate, uh, uh, um, you know, uh, volumes, uh, spaces. It just adjuncts or upadhis, this pot, cup, tumbler, whatever it is, there are upadhis. Space is one. Similarly, the in bodies may be different, but Atman is one. Ataha samam brahma ekam cha. So when the word, Krishna uses the word sama. Sama is used when there are two or more entities. The word sama means similar. Similar is used when there are two entities. And then, um, or more than two entities. But Shankaracharya text, samam here should be considered as ekam. There is only one atma. The smart Brahmani evate sthitaha. Tasmate. Just a second. Just a second, please. Tasmate. Brahmani evate sthitaha. So there is only one Brahman. So the people, some other shis, they all are focused and completely yin. Brahman only. Tasmat na doshakanda matram apitan sprishati deha. So, tasmat hence, even a scent of impurity, even an iota of impurity does not touch this Atman. Deha di sanga, sangata Atma darshana bhi mana, mana bhava tu tesham. That means. So the thing is, these people do not think that the, the bodies and so on, which are come, uh, uh, which are um, conglomerate. That means body has eyes, legs, uh, torso, hair, all these things are put together, right? Uh, uh, blood, uh, skeleton, uh, bones, whatever it is, muscles. These are all sanghata, that means combinations of any kind. That is not Atma. Deha de Sangata Atma Darshana Abhimana Abhavat. They don't have this attachment to the body to think that, oh, this, my body is Atma. Oh, I am uh, my body. They don't have the attachment. Hence, the pure Samadarshi who does not think this body is himself, they can see only one thing that is Atman. Deha di Sanghat Atma Darshan Abhimana Vat Vat Vishayam Tu Tat Sutram Sama Sama Abhyam Vishame Puja Tahaiti Gautava Dharma Sutra uh, Iti Puja Vishet Vene Visheshanat. So the thing is, there is a Gautama Dharma Sutra which says that you have to honor people according to their knowledge and capability and purity and all those things. Who has studied all the Vedas and understand Vedanta and, and he is a very strict person. And, and his uh, behavior is very nice and uh, uh, very respectable. Yeah, he has to be, uh, he has to be uh, given more um, uh, um, uh, respect and honored compared to another wicked person or something like that. So there, uh, that is with regards to karma vishaya. That is, in the, in the karma kanda, 
in the dharma 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 issues respect other thing how do you respect somebody or how do you offer him a seat water or ardhya papadya or any kind of respect uh, respect uh, showing um, you know activities there is this works but shankaracharya says let me go to the next ब्रह्मिशेषसंबंधित्यूट Dosh also, no, no, even impurities. There is no impurities in Brahman. Varjitam ityata ha Brahmani teshita ha. So that is the kind of Brahman they are focusing on, and these samadarshis are completely engrossed in that pure, pure Brahman, which has no connection with any impurities whatsoever. Karma vishayam cha samasama abhyam gautam darsam vityadi. Itu sarva karma. so the, so the the gautama dharma sutras applies to the karma vishayas related to karma related to body actions and things like that idam to sarva karma sanyasa vishayam this is beyond all uh, that is giving up all actions sarva karma sanyasa and being one with this brahman being focused in brahman sarva karmani tu manasa sarva karmani manasa um, this is in the, in the bhagavad gita itself it is said here which is the particular verse here 5.13 just we sanyasyatme sanyasyatma sukham vashi that that verse is there 5.13 we went through it ityarabhya adhyaya pari samapte he from 5.13 onwards till the end of fifth chapter this is the subject of atman brahman only not about karmas that is why this does not apply here so i think um, any questions so far we yeah, had one question okay uh, so uh, if um, uh, if we talk about uh, being a samadarshi uh, one uh, the one who sees everything with equanimity uh, as per shankara bhashya who is that uh, which is seeing uh, uh, in equanimity so because uh, we are saying the jivatmas uh, there is uh, nothing uh, like if we negate the jivatma if we say that everything is one atma then who is it that is attaining samadarshi uh, uh, the uh, mindset of samadarshi and then uh, that samadarshi attains uh, moksha good question so the yeah, think about in the, from the shankaracharya's view think that there is only one atman right if there is one 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 atman there is no karma there is no seer there is no uh, uh, object to see there is no uh, uh, perceiver right there is no seer there is no object to see that is true yes 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 and that is purely consciousness and uh, uh, shuddha mukta atma right unperturbed with no impurities whatsoever that is atma then what what is all these things because each person whether he is a gnani or an agnani or an ordinary person of any kind between an agnani and gnani whatever number of types of people you can think of all of them have something known as body mind intellect for a gnani the mind is pure for an agnani the mind is impure so even a samadarshi is a gnani he still sees the universe but he understands with a strong conviction that there is only one atman his conviction is very powerful but even such a person will be subject to uh, subject to external connects with the vishayas or objects of senses so he has senses he has mind and he is subject to interaction interactions with 
sensual objects. But this jnani has a pure mind. He understands that these are all not atma. And the, the atma is not that. Atma is pure. Atma is ever blissful. He understands that. But so there is a so Jnani is not perfectly, has not become Atman completely. Once he becomes Atman completely, there is no question of seeing, hearing, learning, knowing, no objects of knowledge. There's nothing like that. You understand? Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, my question is sprang from the fact that um, I just read about uh, Puturaja, a okay, person I know that. I know whom that. Uh, KSV Swamin used to meet. Correct. And uh, he used to always... Uh, uh, he used to always negate himself that he doesn't exist and uh, he used to ask anybody don't call him by name or uh, uh, form or so. Correct. It's true. See, the thing is, Puturaja has shown uh, to even KSV uh, he has told in fact, Puturaja and KSV were sitting right in, in front of each other and there was a little dog nearby. Puturaja is is to say to KSV, do you know in my state, I can see the dog, yourself and myself, all this as only one Atman. At the same time, I can also see the difference. I am in that state constantly. There is no, there is no time I am bereft. I am ignorant of that oneness and a slight separation because I'm still talking to you. So the Puturaja does mention Putura, how many people can be in the state of Puturaja? Right? But there yeah, are it is very difficult. But a true Samadarshi is in that state. Do you understand? Yes, yes. That means if we see Sukha, Dukkha and all those things, that means we are not there in the Samadarshi level, right? If you feel pain, pleasure and everything, we are not there in the pure Samadarshi level. We are much, much, much lower. You understand? Yes, yes. Okay. It will become clearer in the next couple of shlokas, by the way. We are now in 519 now. And let us, uh, we will, we will uh, uh, see, we will understand few more, um, few more um, uh, shlokas today, okay? Just one question uh, regarding Samadarshi and uh, Samadarshi Bhava as well as uh, the, uh, the concept of Moksha. Because there isn't, if we uh, read uh, some of the books by Adhyatma Prakash Karyalaya, uh, there isn't something known as moksha because uh, as it is, there is nothing uh, known as bound and unbound. It is just a, a kind of veil uh, through which the people think, uh, whoever thinks that he is bound, he becomes boundless. So that is just for the uh, world. That is just for the vyavaharika. But uh, at the paramarthika level, there is nothing uh, bound or boundless. Uh, in that case, is it also possible that somebody who has attained this Samadrashi uh, state and then uh, the person attains uh, the state where he cannot, uh, he cannot like, he cannot see or he cannot um, observe anything that is just pure Atma. In that case, he is just coming and going in the world. It is just that we see uh, him or her coming or uh, going from the world. That person actually doesn't exist. That person actually uh, doesn't come or go. It's possible that way. Even Shankaracharya says, Nami Bandha Mokshaha in that um, uh, Nirvana Shataka, right? Yes. So the um, uh, thing is, um, so Bandha Moksha is not there. Bandha Moksha is only for the ignorant, right? Even yes. Some yes. ignorance thinks that he is bound and he has to do something to get out of uh, this bondage. And he has to get released from bondage. But Atman is unbound always. So the thing is, in Shankaracharya's philosophy, knowing that you are Atman is the only uh, real moksha. 
And yes, uh, yes. Atma does not get moksha. Atma is always there. Atma is ever free. The ignorant one. Right? Yes, yes. That's all. Yeah. Uh, Krishna, I have a question here. Okay. So finally, it looks like it's a you are we are actually tying that I whatever we call this even the Pandita says I. Uh, so are we tying it to the intellect or the Atman then? Combination BMI right? Yeah, that when whenever we say I, so finally See, are we tying it to the intellect? All knowledge, in of... all knowledge, of, uh, all knowledge in the Shankara Bhashya or Advaita view is mind related only, right? Concept that I am bound, I am free, I am happy, I am unhappy. All these things are mind related. Kshetra, Kshetra, the field. That is why Icha, Dvesha, Hasukam, Dukkam, all these things, Bhayam, Chabhayam, Evacha, all these things are body related, Kshetra related. The Kshetra is also mind. Intellect is also Kshetra. So B, M, I, all three are Kshetras only, right? Do you understand? So the combination of BMI is what um, uh, is known as this, this person. That is, whether he is a jnani or whether it is a jnani, he is that person. That is it. But Atman is pure and that's at the state of goal. Once you achieve the final goal, he is that Atman. Some people, while living itself, can go to that state according to Advaita, which is Seriously, so, uh, you know, which has, you know, some people uh, say that even other systems are accepted, right? Others, uh, so it, others, other systems also accept the state. You have to accept. So it is a state where we cannot say, we cannot think of whether it's a gnani, a gnani or whatever. There is, no, there, there is no thought at that point. In that state, there is no thought absolutely. It is only one Atma, Atma, and that's it. Even there is Anubhava, Anubhavam is also not there. There is no experience. That itself is a state. That's what is the highest for Advaitins. Shankaracharya talks only from this perspective. All, the, all his uh, Bhashya will only come from this perspective. We'll, we'll be, it will become clearer when we go further, okay? Hmm? Can we can we go further? Hello. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can. Okay. No. Uh, did we finish this? Uh, okay. This we have not finished. We finished this. Because Brahman is pure and with no impurities, hence the next verse is there. Na praharshyet priyam prapya nodvijet prapya cha priyam stira buddhihi asam mudho brahmavit brahmane sthitaha. This is a, uh, uh, according to Shankaracharya, it is an advice to people. What is the advice? Na praharshyet praharsham kuryate. Don't get elated, excited. Priyam ishtam prapya. Something which is likable, if you get it, don't get excited. Now, udvijete prapya cha apriyam anishtam labdha. That means don't get upset, angry or sad when you get something which you dislike. Apriya. Once by force you, you are forced to, uh, to, to face such situations, but you never get angry or exi uh, you know, uh, perturbed in any way. Dehamatratma darshinam hi priya priya prapti harsha vishadav kuruvate. Only if you think that you are the body and your atma is same as body, only for you, the priya apriya, that is um, 
that which is happiness giving and that which is sorrow giving. These connects or these episodes or, or um, uh, like you know events occur only for people who think that they are the body. If they think that they are only pure Atman, this kind of sorrow, unhappiness doesn't even occur to them. Tasya Priya Priya Prapti Asambhavate. There is nothing called something likable, something, nothing called something unlikable uh, that is, uh, 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 you know, disgusting or pain giving to the person who knows that he is Atman. Keval Atma Darshinaha, who sees only Atman and nothing else. So only the person who is who has mistaken that the body is himself, body mind intellect is he, that, that person gets into trouble. He gets, he becomes happy, becomes sad, all these things. But the sadness and happiness will never touch the pure Atma Darshi who sees only Atman. Kincha Sarveshu Bhuteshu Yekaha Samaha Nirdoshaha Atma Itistira. Second. Stira Nirvichiki Sa Buddhihi. Yes, yes, Saha Stira Buddhihi. Look at how beautifully Shankaracharya says Sarvabhu Sarve Bhuteshu. In every being, there is one Atma, Nirdoshaha, imp, uh, uh, pure, without any imperfections. It is Stira Nirvichiki Sa, which perfect conviction. Stira, unshakable conviction. Who has this intellect, buddhihi? He is a stira buddhi. Asamudaha. Not deluded. Sammoha varjitaha. With no delusions. No illusions. Yathokta brahmavite. He really knows Brahman. It is not a shah. Brahman, Yathokta brahmavite is not like knowing a textbook or a chapter of Gita or a whole of Gita or Vedanta books and stuff like that. Oh, I am a Brahmavit. No, no, no. It, a realized person. Yathokta Brahmavite. Brahman is Titaha. He is staying in Brahman. He is in Brahman. Akarma Krita. Sarva Karma Sanyasi. He doesn't need to do any work. He can, he has given up all works. So the sadness, and happiness, sadness, uh, happiness, unhappiness, all these things occur to only the deluded person who thinks that body he is himself. And the not deluded person he is well established in Brahman, which cannot be affected by sadness or happiness at all. Okay. This is the second, second verse. I want to uh, I want to give you a couple of um, uh, examples, real examples. Okay? Because these real examples make you think. See, why do you think we have so many Puranas, Itihasas? All these things are very helpful to understand philosophy, right? Itihasa Purana Bhyam Vedam Samupabrahmayete. We should not give our own meanings to the to the shastras we have to get the meaning from great rishis who have given us the puranas and itihasas and we have to fit it together okay. because many advaiti advaitins i know they generally after studying a lot of vedanta and things like that they get a feeling that they themselves are Brahman and they have gone beyond everything kind of a thing. That may be true or not true, I don't know. Okay, I can never second guess other people, but I've seen such people. But if you look, I was looking at a couple of examples, right? The normal example I've already talked about is Ramana Maharshi, Ramakrishna Paramahamsa. Ramana Maharshi said that, you know, while he, when he got cancer, he said that, oh, uh, yeah, I was crying and um, uh, it was hurting last night. I was I was shouting 
uh, because I couldn't bear the bear the pain and all those things. But next day, when somebody asked him, "Oh yeah, the pain happened to whom? Body, mind, intellect, not me." I was calm, contented, but the body and mind and intellect, it 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 uh, you know it wiggles like a worm when uh, when hurt. So obviously, my body, body, mind, intellect was suffering, but I was watching, I was witness, unperturbed. So this is the feeling of Ramana Maharshi at that time. And the second uh, example is Ramakrishna Paramahamsa, when he also had um, throat cancer or something like that. And um, what is this, you know, is it affecting you? What is this? Your, he's, uh, you know, uh, yeah, I, I, I got into trouble and uh, it was painful and all those things um, for my body. It was pain, painful for my body. Then um, somebody said, then you are different from, different from the body? Of course, rascal, you found out what I had in my mind. I was unperturbed. So we have a few examples like that where pain cannot touch some people. Okay. And uh, I was thinking about even great rishis like Vibhandaka's son is Rishyashranga in Ramayana. Um, there, Vibhandaka's son was, was um, nurtured and taken care of without any connect or even interaction with any female person. No, no, women, are, uh, no women should be nearby. Because Vibhandaka wanted him to become a pure jnani, not to be perturbed by anybody. And even uh, the Rishishanga became so famous that even uh, many people around in other towns used to talk about his purity. And one, uh, um, one of the uh, kings of Angadesha, uh, the, the, the king had uh, drought because he did some um, um, uh, offense to Brahmanas. No Brahmin would come and do any kind of yajna. Then he was uh, asked to ask uh, Rishashanga to come. Rishashanga wouldn't come. So he had to somehow lure Rishashanga to come to his, um, his uh, region, Angadesha, his city, and purify that city by just by coming there. So slowly what happens is one, one day he, set a, he sent a set of um, women or to dance, uh, you know, uh, um, dressed like um, dressed like sannyasis, sannyasinis, and they came and just um, talked to Rishyashanga. You see, I am also a meditating tapasvi. Uh, oh, you can, we can all do tapas together. And Rishyashanga did tapas together with all those women. And for, in, in, uh, there are several versions of it, right? Then um, the next day, these tapasvinis, the ladies, went away from there. And it seems that when Vibhanda, that was before his father Vibhandaka could return to the to the hermitage, these ladies escaped, ran away. Then, but this uh, Rishishanga was um, always thinking about these tapasvinis. Next day, it seems, and Vibhandaka noticed. So, what it is is even a great Rishi like Rishishanga can be affected by thoughts, right? Affected by sensual exposure. So, so think about where we are. We have to calibrate ourselves with respect to great people who were there before. So are we better than, uh, you know, Rishashunga? You know, many things come up like this, right? And I have one more example. Um, this I know from a great yogi. Okay, uh, I, I heard about it through some other person. It seems that when the yogi was very young, just like um, he was a teenager, like you know, 10th grade, 8th grade, 7th grade, whatever that level, 15, 16 years or whatever, something like that, his friends used to, uh, friends knew that this person was capable of doing dhyana, that is meditation very well. They used to make fun of him. Look, man, just um, going and doing meditation on a soft cotton pillow covered with satin, and uh, sitting somewhere, maybe you would be able to meditate for some time. But how can you meditate on this, sitting on a barbed wire fence, you know, that uh, to, uh, to contain cows and animals and things like that, they, they put barbed wire fences, which are very, very sharp, which has some um, uh, thorns, you know, made of uh, steel. He said, okay, I'll do it. 
he used to sit on the barbed wire and then he used to do dhyana. And for a half an hour, one hour or something, these people, used to, these kids used to get upset and God put, hey, enough, enough of your show off. Don't be a big show off. Get off from there. He used to come, but still he had blood in his, on his uh, uh, clothes because of sitting on the, uh, the shop bar boy. When they asked him, how did you do dhyana sitting there? Somehow you should have been, you should have, uh, you know, felt the pain all along, but somehow just to show off, you had done it. He used to say, it's in first 30 seconds I had pain. Once my dhyana was established, then I did not feel any pain. There are people like that. And who are you? Where are you? One should evaluate. And anybody, you know, nobody will know how other person feels, right? Somebody may be very high. So, uh, you know, my SM Srinivasaja, SM, SMS Chari, we used to call. He's a good guru. He's a very nice uh, guru. He used to help me out with so much of Shastra information. Uh, he used to say in his own, uh, you know, uh, uh, his own special way. Don't offend any great Bhagavata, any person, whether you would like his clothes or whether he uh, like you, uh, he comes from any religion or anything like that, any markings on the face and things like that. Don't offend anybody. He used to say, He used to say, in time, that means you don't know what kind of snake is hiding in what kind of uh, molehill. So, don't put your, uh, don't mess with them. So we don't know who people are. They may have their own experiences with respect to pain, pleasure, and how they see, uh, they are realized, uh, how much realized they are, right? That's, so I just wanted to give you some context to, hold, uh, to all these things. Only when people get context of reality, they understand these subjects better. Was this, a wasteful lecture or uh, was there any use of me giving you some examples? No, it was very useful. And the uh, second example, uh, I had also heard similar things about uh, one uh, Swami Nityananda from Ganeshpuri. Uh, uh, not the yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. This is not the modern Nityananda, but very old Nityananda. I and in fact, that Nityananda was also one of the teachers of uh, uh, Ajja. Yes, yes. And he finally stayed in Ganeshpuri. It is close to Mumbai. So mm -hmm. I had visited this place. And oh. uh, he was in, uh, similar to uh, uh, this state. He always used to believe that he is not the uh, person or the body-mind complex. Mm -hmm. uh, but one more question regarding many of the others believing that they have attained the state of Brahman. If, they, uh, if somebody believes that he, he or she has attained the state of Brahman, in that case, probably they have not attained that state because somebody who has attained that state may not even talk about it. Possible. Possible. Uh, but some people, um, you know, some people may still talk uh, for the purpose of others, right? Loka Sangrahartham. Very great people, uh, you know, uh, what do you call, can probably do, can talk. Because they are so full established. They are in some Sahaja Samadhi of some kind. And some people will use the same term Sahaja, Sahaja Samadhi. They say, oh, I am in some Sahaja Samadhi. I was always in Sahaja, Sahaja Samadhi. They say. But we don't know. The true experience of people, we don't understand. I have also met even recently younger uh, people younger to me who claim that they are always in Sahaja Samadhi. I have met. But I have not completely evaluated them. I don't know. Okay. And uh, one more question, uh, just uh, uh, just a couple of minutes. So, um, about Ramakrishna Paramahansa. So, uh, to reach such uh, states of uh, Samadarshi Bhava and uh, from there to the uh, last state, uh, uh, I had heard that we need to be always um, following a sattvic kind of uh, lifestyle. But uh, what I heard about uh, the uh, Swamis from the order of uh, Ramakrishna, the Ramakrishna order, um, uh, as well as Ramakrishna Paramahamsa himself, uh, that they you they are used to eat uh, non-vegetarian food, and in that case, would that be a uh, like it's if it's a uh, like it's uh, difficult to attain uh, those. See what you say is an important question. You brought a very good question here. 
um, see, I can only tell you what my Guruji Sri Kesvi Swami said about it. Okay, I have asked the same question to uh, Kesvi Swami. Kesvi Swami is to think that Ramakrishna Paramahamsa is equal to Alwars. Alwars are nine marks kind of people, totally realized person. So uh, he respected Ramakrishna Paramahamsa very much. When I asked this question, he said that Avadala Jnani Ghar Ava Adarsham Illai in Tamil he used to say. Don't copy what they do. But they are great. For some reason, they ate meat. Even the rishis, like uh, they say, Agastya ate meat. Okay. There are some people who, uh, what do you call, when I asked uh, my grandfather's brother, how, what about Agastya who ate Vata he ate whatever the, that was cooked to him and all those things. Then um, my grandfather said, that, that kind of rishi can convert any uh, um, meat into vegetables and eat. They may be in a difference, altogether un, un, uh, you know, unexpected kind of uh, capability they may have. Coming back to KSV Swami, he said, they, Ramakrishna Paramahamsa did eat, eat meat, and he used to say, oh, the uh, Devi Prasada, that is uh, uh, Durge Prasada, so I will eat it, it's okay. So he used to eat whatever it is. That should not be copied. They are not people to, uh, to, to be taken as idols and um, um, uh, copy them, right? Um, they are great people, though. Their knowledge they, uh, should be definitely accepted if you understand the knowledge properly. So many of the Swamiji's, even um, I have heard some smarta traditional people, even on BV Parishad, not disliking Ramakrishna Paramahansa, saying that he is a mamsa, a mamsa Bhakshaka and all those things. Those people should not even be honored and all those things. They have said something like that. But KSV Swami said that, no, no, they have a lot of knowledge and they have realization. So the meat eating may be something which is consequential, like how the rishis eat meat, maybe because of that times or whatever it is, or some, uh, what do you call, um, the loca local customs or whatever it is they had at that time. And uh, this is a hard thing to explain also. So there are some lot of people who are bhaktas of Ramakrishna, and some people just ignore and they say he's a great person, but we will not follow what he's doing. That's all. So KSV belongs to the second category. He, did, he said that he's one of the best, and I really like to understand what he told. So he used to study everything Ramakrishna Paramahamsa wrote or talked about. And But he says that I'm not following him, though. He followed a different Acharya and different uh, uh, set of people, but his respect for Ramakrishna Paramahamsa was unmistakable. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions before we go, we go further? Okay, we'll go to the next sloka. Teacher Brahmani Sitaha, Bahyas Parshesh, Vasaktatma, Vindatyatmani, Sukham, Sub Brahma Yoga Yuktatma, Sukham, Akshay Yamashnuti. So this verse, the next is 21, verse 21. It says, very simply it says, the person who is established in Brahman, Bahyas Parsheshu Asaktatma, the external connects, interactions with the sensual objects. Asaktatma, he is not affected by it. Vindati Atmani Asukam, he derives his bliss from the Atman. So Brahma Yoga Yuktatma, he is connected with Brahma. Sukham Akshaya Mashtute attains great bliss, unlimited bliss, Akshayam. The Shankara Bhashya here says, Bahyas Parsheshu, Bahyascha, Bahyascha, Te Sparshascha, Bahyas Parshaha. Sparsha means connect, that which connects with, Sparsha is touching, right? Thing is, touch with the external objects. When the eyes can see the objects, that is the eyes are touching the objects in a way, like that. So all the indriyas we have, uh, ears, taste, uh, skin and all, they connect, they touch, they have experience of external objects. Shabda vishayaha, sound is the vishaya, sound, sight, objects to see, rupa are the form. Shabda vishayaha, Teshu Bhashyas Parasheshu Asaktaha 
Atma. Asaktaha means he is unperturbed. Here, Atma means antahkarna, mind. His mind is unperturbed. Whoever that person is, that person is Asakta Atma. Vishyeshu Priti Varjitaha. He does not have likings, attraction with any object. Sanne Vindati Labhate Atmani Yatsukham. Look at beautifully how they say, only when you lose interest or excitement in external objects, you can see and realize the internal bliss within. Sanne Vindati Labhate Atmani Yatsukham. Such, uh, we, uh, that is, inside in his own Atman, he gets, he derives unlimited pleasure. Bliss. Brahma Yoga Yukta Atma. Sa Brahmani Yoga Ha. Brahmani Yoga Ha means Samadhi. He is well connected with Brahman. Tena Brahma Yogena Yukta Ha. So he is totally immersed in Brahman. Saha Tasmin Vyaprataha. He is totally immersed. Atma Antahkaranam. And his mind is actually immersed in Brahman. That is the inner Antahkarana is the inner organ. Yes, yes, saha. Sa Brahma Yoga Yukta Atma. Such a person totally engrossed, totally immersed in Brahman. With a mind completely focused in Brahman, with a mind possessed by Brahman completely, Sukham Akshayya Mashnade, he gets ultimate pleasure. Tasmat, ultimate bliss, I should say. Ultimate bliss. Tasmat, Bahya Vishya Pratite, Kshanikaya, Indriyani, Nivartayete, Atmani Akshayya Sukharti. So if you want unlimited pleasure of uh, un unlimited bliss of Atman, you should stay away from external sensual objects of any kind, which are all temporal in nature. They give pleasure here and a few minutes later, there is no pleasure. So all of them should be avoided. Impermanent, transient experiences should be avoided for, by a person totally interested in eternal happiness of Atman. Why should we one not have uh, external experience? All these experiences, you, every, every day you go up and down, or you walk or talk or something, you always, you're always exposed to such external objects. Why should we not, even though there are like, you know, um, whatever it may be, why should we not experience and uh, enjoy and be in, uh, in uh, be live happily like normal people? Because, ehi samsparsha jaha, ehi yasmat, because samsparsha jaha, vishayendriya samsparsha jaha, by the way, this particular verse has special significance in my life. I want to just give you a couple of minutes of information about it. Long time back when I was, uh, you know, when I was here and I left in India and went to US and all those things, when I was exposed to several cultures outside, we, I used to think, that, oh, I also come from a culture, these people around me who are coming from, um, you know, Arabia or Iran or, uh, or Norway or UK or anywhere, so many students were coming from different uh, cities. They're also, they have their own cultures, we have our own cultures. Right. So what is great about these cultures? You know, we were living for 5,000, 8,000, 9,000 years. Our culture was developed in a particular way in India based on the surroundings, food, water, shelter, and all those things. These people came from deserts or cold places, and they uh, had their own cultures and things like that, their own lifestyle, cultures, um, uh, books, textbooks, uh, like Puranas, uh, mystic tales or fairy tales or whatever they had. So what's the big deal about uh, our um, uh, Bhagavad Gita or anything like that? Uh, that's also some cultural text. That's all. Nothing more than that. When I was thinking like that, one of my gurus pointed this shloka. Ehi samsparshaja bhogaha dukhayonaya yevate adhyantavantah kaunteya nateshuramate budaha. 
he, he, he told about this verse and says, have you ever seen an exception to this verse? Whatever this verse is talking about, this is an ultimate eternal truth. Eternal truth. It doesn't change. Long time back, Krishna was there. Oh, so many few thousand years ago. Something he said to Arjuna. But the truth don't change. It is now 2023. But this verse will not be found untrue. That's what he said. Then I said, what does this um, verse mean? Let's look at Shankar Bhasha here. He has matas and sparshaja. So whatever comes be between some kind of a touch between indriyas, eyes, uh, you know, skin, ears, taste, tongue, all these touching different things, eating, uh, this kind of food, that kind of food, uh, touching things of different kinds, and then hearing different sounds, music, or, you know, scary sounds, it doesn't matter. Vishaya indriya samsparshe bhyo jataha. Whatever comes out, whatever experiences that are generated by the touching of the senses and sense objects, bhogaha, dukha yona yona it will definitely give you sorrow only. Dukha yoni means initially it may appear like a little pleasure, but it will end up in sorrow only. They are ooms of sorrow. Yoni means oom. They only are ooms of sorrow. Avidya Kratatvata. Shankaracharya says this is all because of illusory knowledge. Avidya. Ignorance. Because you think that that is very pleasurable. Oh, I want to go to this, uh, like, um, I want to go to this particular place, some sector, or some Disneyland or something like that. Oh, everything is enjoyable and people are dancing around. When you go there, you get stuck here, get this one. After some time, you're bored. You, you are the second time you go, third time you go, after the third time you go, oh, I don't want to go there. Paying $100, Disneyland, what is, what is this? So they become sources of only displeasure, sorrow, something disgusting. Drishyantehi adhyatmika adhini dukhani tan nimittan yeva. It's very interesting here. Adhyatmika dini tan nimittan yeva yatha ihaloke tatha paraloke pi itigamyate eva shabdhate. Look at how wonderfully Shankaracharya says here. Whatever pleasure you got because of the connection between sense and sense objects, because of the sparsha or um, intimate uh, touching of sense and sense objects, what happens? You always only got dukkha, sorrows only. And see, I was thinking, what if I have some experience from within the body, not external senses, from within the body? Are they external? Because Vishaya, Indriya, Samsparsha are all external objects and ex senses and sense, uh, sense objects outside. Like, an, uh, like a you know, wonderful movie I saw, it's a sense object. Uh, the eyes are seeing the movies and the mind is thinking about it. Right? They're all external sense objects and senses. What about something within our body? Are they sorrow giving or not? I had a doubt about this. Shankaracharya clarifies here. Look, there are three kinds of experiences. Adhyatmika, Adhibhautika, Adhidevika. They are all only Dukkhas. What is Adhyatmika? Adhyatmika is that which is coming from your body. That body may be external skin or inside. It could be, a, you know, um, uh, what do you call it? your skeleton or your bones or your muscles or whatever they may be. Dukkhas, experiences, whatever you experience there, that is all only sorrow only eventually. Adhyatmika. Adhi Bhautika. Bhutas are beings. That which was caused by external beings. Some warriors coming and occupying your place. Some Somebody throwing a bomb at, uh, at you or somebody using a knife and killing. All these things are external. They are beings. So the experiences given by other beings, 
by animals or anybody any, any living being that is adhyatmika adi bhautika that is adi daivika is because of um, forces like um, storms like uh, earthquakes which can kill hundreds and thousands of people so so all these experiences here in this world which are adhyatmika adi bhautika adi devika they will eventually end up only in dukha or sorrow you feel very bad about it eventually yatha iha loke tatha paraloke pi shankaracharya says don't think that oh uh, here in this world in this earth on this earth and things like that this is very bad but if i go to indra loka chandra loka manushya gandharva loka um, you know uh, yaksha loka whatever uh, different lokas of different uh, this one there i can get extremely high pleasure so the thing is then you do yagna yaga and all those things if i say if i do this i'll go to indra loka if i do this shani loka it doesn't matter what loka uh, people uh, promise you shankaracharya says all those lokas eventually are only sorrow ridden ridden with unhappiness they are not good don't go after them na samsare sukhasya gandha matra vapi asti iti buddha in this life there is not even an iota of happiness only when you know you will don't you will not follow the the mirage of the experiences of senses and then you completely give up and never bother about sensual experience na kevalam dukhayone ayeva adyantavantascha they are not just wombs of sorrows they have a beginning and the end when you connect with a with an object that's the beginning immediately in a few minutes or few days or you will lose that object or you will lose interest in the object and that will become a pain so yoga indriya samyoga bhagana mantascha tadyoga eva ataha adyantavanta anitya these pleasures come and go and they are only wombs of sorrow they all give you only unhappiness madhya kshana bhavitvat ityaptaha anitya hamis they are temporal they don't last kaunteya nateshu bhogeshu ramate budaha an intelligent person will not revel enjoy the touch of the senses and sense objects budaha he is an intelligent person viveki avagata paramartha tatvaha he knows the truth atyanta moodhana meva hi vishay only the deluded ones go after these pleasures of sense and sense objects yet yatha pashu prabhrati nam they are like animals only animals they are pashus only human beings are not just human beings some of them are animals deluded going after sense gratification and truly interested in atman will not go do that this is the shloka i wanted to finish today 741 now we have covered about an hour plus any questions on this no questions but uh, just one comment that um, uh, the bhagavad gita lectures have been reinitiated and uh, thank you for that because um, this one hour or so um, uh, uh, this this helps me to uh, go deep into understanding bhagavad gita uh, reading after the lecture it uh, it stimulates us to read and uh, understand better Yeah. Uh, or else, for example, because we uh, at least, uh, uh, if I say about myself, I am very far away from any of these streets attended by alwars or any of the uh, bhaktas in this uh, group as well. <laughs> that, that's same for everybody. Else, at least for me. See, the thing is, ah, uh, that is why Bhagavad Gita, Kinchida Gita, Gan. That is what Shankara Chaitanya said in the Bhagavad Gita, right? See. <laughs> every day have a sip of water like that have every day uh, learn bhagavad gita because bhagavad gita is something which you think you know already ah i know bhagavad gita but when you read again and again your mind gets purified and that is why it has to be a parayana parayana grantha every day you used to para, do parayana learn think 
it's very useful good that you feel feel so great any other comments questions before we stop uh, Krishna, a few uh, initially in the class, few minutes I, uh, I, I actually I, I joined a little bit late. Okay. Uh, I might have missed, I might have missed this slope. Yes. Uh, was it was it told and uh, was Shankara's view covered on that? Who one second, one second. Let me see. I start at where Shankara was covered. Okay. Let me see. I started with. Uh, here, uh, yeah, the first one I started was Yahi Vatayajita Sargo Esham Samya Sitamana Nirdo Shamhitam Ambrahma Tasmat Brahmani Testitaha. Yes, I covered this. Oh. Okay, okay. Okay, I'll go through it again. Okay. Any, anybody else? Okay, thank you. Namaskaram. We will continue next week. Um, I am also very happy that we started Bhagavad Gita. Asman Gurbhya Mahasma Parma Gurbhya Mahasma Sri Krishna Parabrahman and Mahashi Lakshmi and Sima Parabrahman and Mahashi Lakshmi Hayodana Parabrahman and Mahasarvam Sri Krishna Paramaskar. Namaskaras. Thank you.